Welcome back to Lee Anderson's Real World. And today I'm delighted to be joined by a bit of a legend, actually. This is Johnny Ball. He was he's a mathematician, a TV presenter, personality, a comedian. All rounder, really, aren't you, Johnny? I was. You could really say I was. was at my age. Look, <laughs> I, my maths isn't great, but I know that you're of a certain age. Uh -huh. um, um, getting on a bit, I would say. Yeah. But you're still very active. You still get out oh, there. still working. Still yeah. interested in mathematics. But you was a comedian yeah. at one time, weren't you? I only 17 years. 17 it was a passing years. thing. What <clears> made <throat> you get into that sort of and work? That, that's where I wanted to go. I, be, I became a, a bottling red coat. Did the forces, three years, which is my university, the RAF. Um, then did Butlins for three years. Cause that, cause which Butlins was that? Uh, Port Haley, North Wales. Well, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And which I loved, I loved, and I loved the forces. So everything was great. So after that, um, I I was a comedian for 17 years. Loved it. The first year I was a pro, I got nine nights off in the year. Did all the clubs. The only club Roy Orbison ever did in his life, they asked me to support him. The only club the Bee Gees ever did in their career, they asked me to support them as well. So it was, it was a lovely time in the clubs. But I didn't see what I did in the clubs as going to television. I never did. Yeah. And I was already doing play school. And it's funny, but it was a beautiful contrast and a lovely different mood. So why did you go from being in, in probably working men's clubs, you know, yeah. rough, tough clubs, there's some um, characters in there, to doing a children's programme? Well, they like used that. to shout to me, still doing that play school, John? I said, <laughs> yeah, you're still watching it. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> and then they really heckled me. I said, another word, and you're going through the square window. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that. But, but they, they dovetail. They work very well together. Yeah. Everybody, the comics, Les Dawson and, and people like that, yeah. wondered what I was doing mm. because they thought it would mar uh, the comedy. Yeah. And I think from television point of view, it did. Okay. But I didn't want to do what I did in the clubs in television. But at school, you didn't leave with that many qualifications. Two O-levels. Two O-levels. One, one was maths and the other one wasn't. But in maths, what score did you get? 100%. Really? Yeah. And they, because they had to check it, because they couldn't understand it, because very few people got 100%. So you're like and a did. prodigy at school. But I, was in, but I was in the fifth set. I was in lower five. I was in five E. What, what does that mean? The bottom set. OK. So I'd fallen through the net, um, because, as a lot of kids do, you yeah. see. And I was born in Bristol, and now I'd moved in secondary school, I was in Bolton. And before television, a Bristol accent in Bolton was just the same as talking Urdu. <laughs> they didn't understand me, yeah. the teachers didn't understand me. Yeah. And uh, so I felt, but as soon as I left, got work for the Haviland Aircraft Corporation, and got a smashing job with them and yeah. was on a business course, got three more O-levels on my own. Right. So it was only school where, where it was a mess. So why did you excel at maths, do you think, if you was in the bottom set? Because my dad loved maths. Yeah. And, and, and my dad had me playing, literally before I could hold them, double nine dominoes, not double sixes. Double nines, yeah. He always says double sixes yeah. are for wimps, <laughs> right? Double nines. And, 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 and taught me maths. And the only books I had was a set of eight encyclopedias. Okay. And that's all I had to read at yeah. home. And and honestly, it, it, so it all came through in the end and, and it was lovely. And the thing about my career, apart from the fact it's still going on, is is the variation has been just a joy. Yeah. You know, really happy. So yeah, play score, comedian, yeah. a mathematician. Yeah. Now, uh, Rishi's been in the spotlight uh, in the past few months, uh, our Prime Minister, <coughs> about making it compulsory for, for students to learn maths up to the age of 18. Now, maths is not the sexiest of subjects, and right. I guess, I mean, I didn't like maths. I, I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't understand why we needed it, because we've got calculators and right. computers. But how do we make it, Johnny, more interesting for well, young people? Well, we've made it less interesting. When we did um, the Think programmes, we checked where the best mathematicians were coming from, and they were coming from Singapore. Yeah. And when we checked why they were coming from Singapore, it's because they were still using the textbooks yeah. that we used in this country in the 1950s. Yeah. And that was in the 1970s, right? Yeah. And I've got yeah. the set, the first set that went metric. Yes. And if you looked at that set and the maths that was taught in those days mm. and compare it to the maths curriculum today, you'd be horrified. Mm. It's down to about a third. The other thing is the Greeks, who were the greatest uh, mathematician, math mathematical nation in the yeah. world, yeah didn't do numeracy. If you were the Secretary of State for Education and you could get stuck into some schools, uh, especially with teaching maths, what would you change? I would change, I would reduce um, numeracy and I would reduce statistics in secondary because yeah. machines do statistics very well. Yes. 
So all we need to do is understand the fundamental statistic, not how to do it ourselves, okay. you see, and get geometry back in. Because I guess with statistics, there's no point, is there? Is there anything machines do them themselves? That's, if, if machines are doing it, as long as you understand what the statistics yeah. that the computer is telling you mean, yeah. yes. then you're all right, you know, and you, need, you do that because you're professional in that, that business. Yes. <clears throat> but, and the other thing is when I was in the 90s, and noughties, when I worked a lot, for the government and for all kinds of people, I realized that every time there was an election, suddenly the curriculum was reduced in maths. Why? Because they thought, if we reduce the curriculum, yep. we'll get better results. Yep. No, you get more boredom. So yeah, I guess you're like um, a, a dynasty of, of entertainers, TV personalities. I mean, there's you, there's your daughter. I think, is your grandson getting involved in, in TV he now? Is. There's, a, there's a couple of firms thinking of doing a series for the three of us, which okay. we'd love to do. We really would love to do. And I put some ideas forward, so they're all being considered. And it would, Woody would love it. Woody's 23. Is he, a, is he a mathematical genius like his granddad? No, but he had a good education. He went to um, Brighton College, okay. which I suggested that he went to. And um, and he did very well. And he's following his dad, and he's a DJ, but different to his dad, okay. totally different. Yeah. And, and that's lovely. And he's got a lot of spark. I talked to him at Christmas. You talk to a 22-year-old for a, an hour, yeah. as I did last Christmas, to him, and you get a feeling of whether they are very young or very old, whether their mind is formed yeah, 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 yeah. or whether it's scattered. I understand that. He was, I found him incredibly lucid and incredibly lucid and incredibly understanding of today. Yeah. So I was chuffed with that. I Come really on. was chuffed Come with on. that because you don't see that with all young people. So, Johnny, spelt with an H, got a couple of books on there. Can we uh, well, have it's a look at those? Near Christmas, as I say, this is a farce. These, num these books. Can we just show the cameras? All about numbers yeah. and all about maths. These are the second titles. At first, this was <coughs> Think of a Number, and that was. So, what age are these for? Mathematicians. This one, probably primary, yeah. late primary. Yeah. This one, late primary, and definitely secondary yeah. as well. I get royalties from these today, yeah. and I have to say, 85% of it comes from China. What do you, mean, sell, what do you mean comes from they're China? They're in Chinese. Okay. They sell oh, right, so there's like Chinese mad. people. But 85% of my, and, and sadly, less than 5% comes from UK sales, and it's so sad. Well, I mean, we see in schools today, I mean, some of the Chinese kids from the Chinese backgrounds doing in, a lot better than some of our, uh, our own kids in, in maths and in English. There's, there's a parental motivation. Yeah. There is with Asian kids as well. A parental yeah. motivation, is. which is strong. And sadly, not everywhere, but we are losing it to a certain extent in the UK. Yeah. And our kids are, if they're becoming juvenile delinquents, it's because there's no direction for them. So how do, we, how do we solve that, John? Is that in the home? Is it at school? There's, there's lots of ways. I'm, I'm working for the Royal Air Craft RAF Benevolent Fund okay. at the moment. And I'll be saying that with kids with no direction, yep. I see the best thing, I, the, the one thing I would advise them is join the forces for as short a term as you can. And you can always resign. So what would you say? I mean, Richard's come up with this plan to, to teach kids. Uh, is that a bit of stick about it? I actually think he's, he's trying to do the right thing by getting kids to learn maths. And if he's need right. It. We need everybody. We need all our kids to get the highest qualifications, yep. and especially in maths. Maths makes the world go round. Mm. <clears throat> it is the, the basis. If, yeah. Without maths, it doesn't matter if you've got 17 languages mm. and, and all kinds of other things. If you haven't got maths, then you'll be floundering to a certain extent. Yep. It's, the, it's the mathematical eye that you need, the mathematical understanding yeah. that you need. And that's why the Greeks taught it with geometry and they were the greatest yeah. nation. Okay. And Islam was brilliant, you see, because yeah. Islam found the Hindu numbers. The Hindus didn't uh, export them, they found them. And Islam brought our number system yeah. to I us today. Yeah. And Islam created the Renaissance. So you can't condemn Islam. It, it, it was fundamentally, it was much better than the Christian religions. Oh, listen, in boosting religion. Johnny, that Going has that been back. fascinating. Um, <laughs> oh, I trying to come up, come up about 80 years into, into eight minutes. It's been <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. You're one of them chaps that I, I grew up watching on TV. So it's, it's a great pleasure to, to, to have you here.